In this lesson, we will learn how to animate an object along a path in Maya. With path animation, we can constrain an object to follow a curve. This works out to be a great solution when animating, let's say, an aircraft or perhaps a car that needs to drive through an environment. Not only can we animate those types of objects quickly with path animation, but we can do so in a way that conveys realism. Now let's go ahead and have fun in this scene. What we'll do is have our robot observe this damaged area. We'll create our path, we'll constrain the robot, and by the end of this, it should look like he's kind of hovering in an arc. Let's go ahead and jump to our top view. From there, we can go to our Create menu, and we can grab one of our curve tools. We can work with the CV curve tool. I might recommend working with the arc tools. Let's go ahead and grab the three-point circular arc tool right here at the top. That way we can create a curve that has a perfect arc. So from there I'll go ahead and create three points. There's one, there's two, and on this last one we can hold the left mouse button and use this last point to adjust the path until we've managed to create a shape we like. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and hit enter to set the curve. Keep in mind we still have history on this so we can use that to adjust the path even further if we'd like. Or feel free to go to component mode. You can press F8 and adjust your points from here. Nice. Alright, let's say we jump back to our perspective view. From here, I'll go ahead and turn on curves. We'll now grab the hovering plate and then we'll shift select the path that we'd like to constrain it to. From there, we can go to animate, motion paths, attach to motion path. Let's have a look at our options quickly. You can see that we have settings to choose the duration of the path animation. We also have settings to determine how the object will be oriented along the path. And then parametric length, this is cool because it allows us to either cause the object to move at a constant rate along the path, or with this off, we're actually in parametric spacing mode. And that looks at the spacing of each CV along your curve to determine the object speed. So if you're familiar with timing and spacing, it kind of works the same way. We know that when our drawings are closer together, the animated object moves slowly at that point. But then, if they're spread further apart, that means that the object would pick up speed. So in this case, we can go ahead and work with parametric length off if we would like to take that approach of timing and spacing. Now keep in mind, we can access these settings in the attribute editor. So what I'll do is just go ahead and click attach. Alright, fantastic. Let's go ahead and have a look. When we hit play, you'll notice that the object will travel from the start of the curve to the end of the curve from 1 to 100 because of our settings, right? It was set to time slider. Let's go ahead and head over to the channel box and we'll focus on our motion path input. So you'll notice that we have parameters that we can use to adjust the twist axes, or essentially the orientation of the object along this path. So if you need to add any variations, and if you'd like to animate those types of changes, you can go ahead and use the front, up, and side twist parameters. So we'll have a look at that soon. We could also use the U value to animate the object along the path and change its timing, its position. So we'll have a look at that. But before we do, let's go ahead and fix the orientation. Let's say we jump to our attribute editor. Again, we can use the hotkey control A or we can use the attribute editor tab. Now let's go ahead and search for the motion path tab. And here we have it. Now what we need to do is go ahead and fix the front axis and perhaps the up axis. Let's go to the front axis and take a look. So right now it's set to X and this is all determined by the world axis in Maya. So if you were to take a look at the bottom left hand corner, of your screen, that'll give you an idea as to how this works. So again, right now the front axis is set to X. If we were to set this to Z, now you can see that the robot is facing the path. Cool, and then we can go ahead and change the up axis to let's say X. You can see that he's upside down, but no worries. We can correct that by inverting our up axis. So we'd simply check on, invert up. Nice. Now, how can we have him face 
the damaged area. Well, remember, we have our twist parameters that we can use. If we were to hold down Control, we can start to drag with the left mouse button to change our properties inside of the attribute editor in an interactive way. So you'll notice that as we start to use the up twist, it's more like a pitch, right? He's moving back and forth, or tilting forward and backward. If we were to go ahead and change the front twist, he's going to tilt side to side. Now with the side twist, we can go ahead and use that to swivel him so that he is focused now on this damaged site. So again, we can hold down control and drag with the left mouse button to edit this value interactively. Or we can go ahead and put in a value. Let's go ahead and try negative 90. Nice, that works. Let's go ahead and hit play now. All right, sweet. So take a look. Now he's focused on this damaged site. Cool. If you wanted to, you could also change your path even after the object has been constrained. You can go ahead and, let's say, add some rotation, or you can adjust your points. What I'll do is go ahead and go to component mode just to show you this. We can go ahead and select a few points here, and we can go ahead and start to kind of pull at them. And you'll notice how that's going to affect the object now. Cool. Now, what I don't quite like is the fact that the plate is staying on the same level. Like, it's not following the path as we start to change the path's shape. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and stop the lesson here. In the next lesson, we'll go ahead and fix that issue. And I'll also show you how to change the timing, just in case you'd like to either slow it down or speed it up. But either way, it's important to know how to do that. And we'll learn how to do just that in the following lesson.